What's going to happen to all the muscle you've been working so hard to build once you get a little older? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and today I'm extra excited because I'm going to be talking all about my specific field of research and that's aging and muscle loss. That's right, I'm an expert at losing muscle. Let's start with a couple of important terms. Firstly, as we get older, we tend to lose muscle and strength. It's a process called sarcopenia and it's very common. In fact, some people can lose up to 40% of their muscle mass from their prime in their 20s to their 80s. While most people can start losing muscle from their late 20s, that loss of muscle really starts to speed up once we hit our late 50s or 60s. Like I just mentioned, it's not just muscle size that's lost, but it's muscle strength too. And the loss in strength is probably even a lot faster than the loss of muscle. All of these changes can actually have a huge impact on our health and quality of life. You see, muscle isn't just for helping you look good at the beach. It also plays a massive role in your health. So much so that lower levels of muscle mass, low levels of muscle strength, and even the combination of low muscle mass with high body fat are all associated with a really wide range of different health conditions, from heart disease and diabetes to frailty and even dementia. Just to give you an example, in people who already have heart disease, those with the highest levels of muscle mass seem to have the best chance of living longer. On the other hand, people with the lowest amounts of muscle seem to be at the greatest risk of dying from all causes. This tells us that having more muscle might be really important for heart health. Why this happens? Well, we don't know, not exactly anyway, but it may have something to do with special chemical messengers called myokines that are produced in our muscles. And these can help to reduce inflammation throughout the body. Muscle can also have effects on the different types of cholesterol in our body too. Another major benefit of having healthy muscles is that they help to protect us from diabetes. You see, when we eat and digest carbohydrates like bread or fruit or potatoes, sugar enters your bloodstream and a lot of that gets sent straight to your muscles. Then your muscles can use it for energy or turn it into glycogen for storage. People with sarcopenia, again, low levels of muscle mass, also tend to be a lot less active and this puts them at a greater risk of osteoporosis or brittle bones. This is because the main signal to keep your bones strong comes from muscles tugging on them when we move, which is why strength athletes tend to have some of the highest bone densities recorded. The loss of strength also means people may be more likely to fall and fracture their brittle bones. What's really crazy is that the fear of falling can actually make some people even less active because they don't want to get up and risk a fall, turning it into a vicious cycle of muscle loss. That could seriously reduce someone's quality of life and even put them at a greater risk of depression. For me, personally, one of the scariest risks of low muscle and strength is becoming weak and frail, which means people aren't able to carry out normal daily activities. Simple tasks like getting out of bed, standing up from a chair, climbing the stairs, or carrying the groceries home can become difficult or even impossible, which makes living independently a lot harder. Nobody wants to lose their independence when they get older. But why does all this happen? Why do we lose muscle and strength as we get older? There are actually a lot of changes that happen as we age that contribute to muscle loss. So here are just a few. The first, and by far the most important reason, is a big drop in activity as we get older. It's just normal for people to do less as they age, to walk less, and to do less physical work. Our later years or retirement are seen as the years we're supposed to take a load off and relax. In reality, that's not a totally healthy idea. You see, the main stimulus for building or even keeping muscle is exercise especially resistance exercise, where we try to move something forcefully. Without that stimulus, our body has no reason to maintain its muscle or strength. There's actually a lot of research that shows that older people that stay active throughout their life have larger and healthier muscles as they age, and that those older people who engage in lifelong weightlifting have the largest and strongest muscles. Besides the lack of activity, there is another issue called anabolic resistance that makes building and maintaining muscle a lot harder for older people. Anabolic resistance means an older person's body doesn't react as well to anabolic stimuli as a younger person's body. To help you understand this, you've probably heard me talk a lot about muscle protein synthesis, or MPS, before. Increasing MPS is how we maintain and build muscle, and we can do it in two ways. First, with exercise, and secondly, by eating protein. Both stimulate MPS, but with anabolic resistance, older people may need more intense exercise and higher levels of protein compared to younger people, to stimulate MPS to the same extent. We'll talk a little bit more about protein in a second. Some other things that can contribute to anabolic resistance or lower muscle mass as we age are insulin resistance, high levels of inflammation, reduced protein digestion, 
lower levels of anabolic hormones like testosterone and estrogen in women, lower appetite, reduced blood flow to muscles, increased levels of body fat within the muscles. A lot of those are also connected with low levels of activity and just aging in general. So, are we destined to lose all our muscle as we age? Not quite. While some degree of muscle loss is inevitable as we get older, there are some lifestyle changes that we can make to slow it down considerably. And it's even possible for older people to gain muscle too, even into their 70s and 80s. The most important thing to do is to get more active. Any increase in activity is good. So for someone who spends all their time sitting down, just walking around a little more could be a great start. From there, progressing to resistance exercise like bodyweight exercise, resistance bands, weight machines, even free weights depending on the ability, can help people improve muscle strength and size. High protein diets containing foods such as lean meats, fish, eggs, and low fat dairy products can also help to build and maintain more muscle than exercise alone. In fact, my research group just published a meta-analysis. That's a combination of the results of multiple studies showing the benefit of protein on muscle mass and strength in older adults who exercise. You can find the link in the caption below. Getting at least 25 to 40 grams of protein each meal is especially important. That may not be easy for older people with smaller appetites. So that's where protein dense foods like meat, dairy, and even some supplements can be useful. On top of that, other supplements, including creatine, vitamin D, and fish oil, may help people hold on to more muscle and improve their quality of life as they age. With people living longer lives, sarcopenia is a very real and very serious issue. But lifestyle habits can have a huge effect on reducing your chances of losing a lot of muscle and strength as you age. It can also help your parents and even grandparents build some new muscle and strength. I love talking about this research. So as always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.